are we all tonight? Hello. I'm sorry for those of you on Instagram. I apologize in advance. The system only gives me your Instagram handles and not your name. So I will do my best. Hi, is it Condor1943? Lovely to have you with us. And Anne as well. Lovely to have you with us as well. So, so good to see you. I do apologize if I keep looking to the side. You guys are here on this camera, but when I see the messages is over there. So it does look like I'm not paying attention every so often. So I do apologize, but lovely to be here. So today we are going to get creative with our die cuts and we are going to use them to make almost like chipboard style embellishments to use on a mixed media project. So that is the plan for today. Good evening, Lisa. Lovely to have you with us. So you didn't tune in to see my face. First of all, before I flip around, I just want to say a huge thank you to Creating Craft. So we are actually streaming on the Creating Craft Facebook page as well as on GMC Designs as well. So thank you so much for having me and letting me have a play. And it's so good to be crafting um, with you guys. Hands up, who is crafting? I love the idea of the fact that we're all just together in, the, in our craft spaces, crafting away. I think that's fab. Anyway, as I said, shall we just get started? Um, hello elegant inspirations. Let's flip the camera around so that you can see my desk and we will do some crafting. Sorry, never quite get that lighting right. But hey ho, that's my blank desk. There is something there, it's a little bit dirty. I'm just removing the keyboard. I really need to get around to actually changing it. So as I said, we are going to play with dies tonight. Let me show you what we're going to do. We are using the Marvelous Mechanics dies. Hello Bridget, lovely to have you with us. So we have the Marvelous Mechanics dies and that is what we are going to create our 3D embellishments with. So let's just do a little run through of the basics. Let's cut some dies and then we can build our project together. So I've got my die cutting machine out. I'm just using um, a big shot for today. So whatever these dies, so these are the GMC dies, they will work with whatever you have. Hello, <laughs> sorry, Turk Scrap, Scrap um, Hello Sandra, how are you? How did your Kickstarter go? It looked like you were rocking it as expected. So let's get the dies. We have got our dies there, which I am placing flat on my mat. I can't decide. Why well, haven't decided? Which angle's best? We've got overhead or to the side? We'll go for to the side for the minute. Hello Rianne, lovely to have you with us. So is everybody crafting? So I'm gonna pop my paper down and then we will sandwich it between the two plates. I know most of us have die, done die cutting before, but we'll just do one pass. So, and then we're just gonna crank that through. And my table's wobbling. You love the side angle. Thank you, Sandra. My husband set it all up. See, we'll go back to overhead now because we're not seeing anything. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side, I am, oh, hang on. I forget that I'm on multiple screens and what's working on Facebook doesn't necessarily work on Instagram. You can't stay long, you just wanted to say hello. Well, hello, my lovely. And thank you for the hugs. Hello, Wendy. How is the weather in Spain today? I've just not caught, quite caught the edge of my dye there. So I'm just gonna give it a little run through. Sorry, we will get on to stuff. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I've actually cut my dies properly. Honestly, my desk is shaking so much, it's shocking. And then I've just realized that we've not put the extra light on, so we will do that in just a second. Right, let's have a little bit of a look. Let's just turn up the light. Hello, Linda. How are you? I was thinking about you today. And do you know why? It's because I've just drawn a, a sea slug. <laughs> And I was like, oh, it reminded me of yours. It's sunshiny and warm where Wendy is. I'm very jealous, Wendy. Very jealous of the Spanish weather. Right, so let's pop this to the side and then we're just gonna pop these dies out. So most of your dies, including these ones, have little release areas 
the white on white's working really well so we're just going to pop some of these out. I don't need to pop them out because I have prepped quite a few. Hello, Caroline. Lovely to have you join us. So who's crafting? Who's crafting today? So let's just take out I'll take out one more because I've got, as I said, I've got them to the side. So what I have done with these is I had a little die cutting session. Let's grab a little bit just for a second. Bear with just for a second I'm just gonna sound like Miranda there bear with bear with <laughs> just so you can actually see what's occurring hello Andrew how are you today so once you have had a little die cut in session so we'll just do the one because I do have a few prepped we need to grab a few different pieces so for the ones that I've done for the project I have glued four pieces together I've just got the three for the minute, so we will go with that. So I'm just going to grab some glue, just normal glue. You don't need anything fancy. But if we layer up our dies, because I love using chipboard on mixed media projects. So I have to show I'm not very sent on Instagram. Um, but you can sort of become a hoarder of gorgeous project pr products because sometimes they're just so pretty and we've spent a bit of money on them that we don't quite want to use them so once we've done that we've created quite a heavy especially by the time you've got the glue in as well hello my lovely i'm i don't know your name because you're showing up as one two three six oh nine <laughs> But lovely to have you with us nonetheless. So once we have glued about three or four layers together, I prefer four. See, these ones are four. It And these ones have been dry because they've been sat there all day. It feels like chipboard. And so now we have a 3D embellishment. But for the cost of one set of dies, we can make as many of these as we want. And we'll never need to run out of our favourite designs. So that is why I love doing that with my dies. So it's a really fun thing to do. Now, you may or may not know, but I do love making art out of recycled elements. So this, as you can see, I'll just hide the branding because we are on face <laughs> on Cream Craft as well. This is a piece of, oh, it's so big, I'm gonna have to hang on. This is a piece of cardboard. So it looks like it was from a duvet cover. <laughs> and I'm going to turn it into a mixed media tag. So I'm just going to take that tab off the top because we have no need of that right now. And I am going to just, for the sake of interest, I'm going to have a torn edge at the bottom. And the reason why I quite like doing that is look at all, the, I'm going to put you closer again now that we're short on the tag. Look at all that gorgeous texture. It's so nice. I love texture. Right, as I said, I want to turn this into a tag. So the simple way of doing that is we're just going to cut a corner off like so. And then we grab the corner and take it to the opposite side. And then we have a perfectly matching angle with no measuring required. Because I don't do measuring. I'm allergic to it. You've been colouring, but now you're about to have tea. Well, that sounds like a perfect day. Hello, Alison. Lovely to have you with us. Now, I was very, I was, I forgot to be cheeky and ask if you fancied sharing. <laughs> so if anyone wants to share the lives, it would be really appreciated. It is a way that we can support each other, small businesses, and it doesn't cost anything. Right, I am just going to expose some of the texture on this because it's cardboard and it's one of my favourite things about working with cardboard is that we have gorgeous texture. It's also cost effective because, you know, we all seem to acquire lots of packaging in our lives. Um, and also it's recycling. It's making beautiful things out of trash. So I'm going to expose it in three different areas because of the rule of threes. So the reason that we like things in three is because the brain likes to choose between this and that. So if you have two things, it will make a choice. I prefer this side or that side. Um, and because of that, 
sorry, I'm trying to concentrate on pulling this off and talking and it's not working very well. This is why when you're live on Creating Craft, it's so much easier. Oh, thank you, Karen. Um, because you have presenters that can sort of fill the gaps when you suddenly go silent. <laughs> Doing it on your own is not quite so easy. Yeah, so if we do the rule of threes, basically it tricks the brain into seeing it as one whole thing because it can choose between this and that, but it can't choose between this, that and the other. So by putting things in three different areas, it suddenly sees it as one, which is why with composition, it, it, um, it helps you to see it as a whole. I'm just going to try and take one more bit. I don't know why I'm putting so much effort in because I've got a, a bit that's prepped. But, you know, I'm making life difficult for myself. As you do. So I'm sure it's very interesting watching someone <laughs> tear cardboard. The one I prepped this morning, it didn't seem nearly this tricky. It just came off nice and easy. But this one is just proving to be difficult. But the reason I want to do it is it's just exposing this gorgeous, gorgeous texture. So next time you buy some craft supplies, save your packaging because it can become art. <laughs> the packaging can become art. There we go. That's enough. We've got enough there. So now what I'm going to do is I... Hi, Judy. How are you? Lovely to have you with us. So I am going to grab some of these bits and pieces that I have created. Sorry, I am just trying to separate my die cuts from my stamped images. Right, so as we've said, this these are pieces that we have, for those of you who have just joined, we've die cut them. We've die cut them about four times and they're all glued together and so now we've made a lovely 3D strong embellishment. Hello Plum Blossom Lane! That's a gorgeous name. What's What was the inspiration behind your Instagram name? I love that, it's fabulous. Right, so I'm just going to pop this on. The other advantages about you using your die cuts with this is one of the best ways to achieve a gorgeous cohesive look with your mixed media projects is to overlay your elements and to have them sitting on top of one another. But sometimes if, again, we've spent money on chipboards or we've spent money on these gorgeous metal embellishments, it can feel... We can feel like, oh, I don't want to cover it up because it's precious. <laughs> good evening. I'm afraid whoever's just said good evening, um, for some reason, Facebook is just telling me, Facebook user, it's not giving me your name. So that looks okay, but it just looks like lots of stuff that have been placed down. Where the magic happens with mixed media is when we start to overlay things, it suddenly becomes a lot more interesting. So when, and as I said, using die cuts, because we can make more, we're never worrying that like, oh, what if it all gets covered up and then I wished I had it on something else. Okay. So I'm gonna build up my composition the same, thank you Caroline for sharing. Thank you Alison, I do really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Right, so we're gonna pop some more bits and pieces down. So again, side by side, looks okay. But the magic happens when we start to put one embellishment on top of another. It looks so much better. Now, in my original design, I had the third bit down here, but I've not let myself given myself room, so let's put it up here instead. <laughs> okay. Oops. Now, to be honest, mind you, in the one that I prepped, I used this glue. I didn't use gel medium. You could stick it down with gel medium if you wished. And I also realised I'm all organised. 
and I thought I had everything out and ready and I've just realised that actually I just need to go and get some paste but we will we will just go grab that it's just behind me so it shouldn't take me too long so that's that is my basic composition okay and then I'm going to grab sorry excuse me while I scoot across the room she says that but I've obviously moved it while tidying up. Maybe I put it in here. Sorry, two seconds. If it's not where I think it is, there we go. We're all right. It's all good. I am now using the Pretty Gets Gritty Texture Paste. And I'm going to grab a little pellet knife. I love this stuff, especially when going for this sort of mechanical. We're going to go patina. So I love when we... Hi, Wendy. No worry. Go and enjoy your dinner. Um... I love this stuff for when you're creating a sort of rusty patina sort of look because it's really gritty and gorgeous. You can actually hear that. It's fabulous. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit in various sections of this. It's just lovely. Right. And then I'm going to leave that to dry and come back to it probably in about three days time. <laughs> That's very true, it probably will. But thankfully, I have one I made earlier. I spent my whole life wanting to say stuff like that and now I do it all the time. <laughs> so this one, it has the same elements. There we go, if I do the telly twist there. We've got, and you can see the dimension and that's just been caused with the die cuts. So we have that there, we've got our three areas, I've built it up the same way as we did before and all I've done is put a layer of gesso on it and let it dry. Um, just because, yeah, I'm sure you didn't tune in to watch paint dry, it's not that interesting. Hello the craft room. You have to let me know your names. For those of you on Instagram, please do feel free to share your names. Right, I have some paints. I have the, these Kurataki Gans Chambis. I think I just use these so much because I like seeing it. It's just really fun. It's really fun. Right, I'm going to give them all a little squish because the pigment works so much better if it's been activated first. Right, so I'm going to let that. And then we are going to create a patina effect so there are some gorgeous products out there where you can create patina really easy but to be honest you can do it with the stash that you have so all we need is a rust rusty colors and some greeny teal colors so that is what we are going to go for i'm going to go for some of these gorgeous browns and i'm just going to dab it in various areas of the project I love this paint, it's so opaque. So this is watercolour, it's almost a gouache. It's so opaque. Right, hang on, sorry, I'm just gonna move this over. Okay, so I'm gonna dab some of this around. It's so pretty. Honestly, my pen pot is ridiculous, my paintbrush is ridiculous, it really needs emptied. It's been here for far too long, look. It's absolutely stuffed. I can barely get to the water. So that'll be a job. Right, now I'm going to go for like an orangey. So we've got a brown. So rust is like various shades of brown. So we're going to get that just splodged. You do not have to be an artist to do this. You do not need to be artistic. You just need to be able to use a paintbrush. Anyone could do that. We're literally splodging. Okay, and I'm sort of working in the same three areas that I had my that I have my die cut embellishments, and then um, we don't have much of a yellow here. I'll go for this beigey brown. Why not? We will go for that and see what occurs. Right, so that's us got our rust colours down. Now to get it patinaed. Hello, Liz. Now to get it patinaed, we need to start to add blues and teals. So we're going to add this dark teal. We're just going to add a few different places. So there we go. We've got our dark one there. And I'm going to come in with this bright blue. 
doesn't look so bright when you get it down you know when tunes in just now they'll think oh, what on earth <laughs> looks a complete mess so this is as far as i've got in my head i don't have a finished project now uh, we are going to wing it we're just going to go through the creative process together discover what's working change what's not and hopefully end up with something gorgeous at the end of it right yeah i think i think that's i think that's our colors for the minute okay i'm just gonna pop my things to the side and then one of my favourite things in the world. We are going to spritz. So obviously this is a watercolour and we are going to get some gorgeous movements of all of that colour. And we're just going to let the water do its thing. The reason I like this technique is we have to let go. We have to lose control of it. We can't really control what it's going to do and where it's going to go yes we can move it around a little bit but other than that we just got to let it do its thing and i think that's where it's at it's most magical so there we go we've got some colors there it's kind of seeping into all the different bits and bobs so i think we will leave that there to dry for just now and um, we will i if i was not live right now i would be leaving this to dry overnight and coming back to it but we will blast it with a heat gun but because we have some colouring to do, I'm just going to pop it to the side and see how long we can get that to, how long we can give it. And then we can give it a little bit of encouragement later on. Right, so I'm going to just pop that on the drying station, aka the floor. And we will come back to it and see what we have later on. Right, now I am going to do some stamping and we are going to do some really basic colouring that I promise absolutely any of you can do. So we are going to go with this big box stamp. She seems to be a favourite at the minute. I am definitely pulling it out quite a lot. Hello Liz. Right, so... Let's grab this stamp and I am going to be using a combination of alcohol markers and biros, would you believe? Right, so because I am using my alcohol markers, I want my Memento ink um, because that is what will work best. Hello Pauline, how are you? So let's just... So whistle you round for a second so that we can see. Right, there we go. Hang on. I'll get myself the right place eventually. There we go. This the side angle is a much better angle when it comes to colouring. So we will go with that. At the minute we have a bit of reflection, but once we've got rid of the stamping block, all will be good and right with the world. Right, so I'm just going to use Memento ink. If you are interested in what ink pads work with what colouring mediums, I highly recommend that you check out uh, Paula's, um, she, well, she's on the Creating Craft YouTube page, their blog and the app, describing what inks you need for what colouring products. She is incredibly knowledgeable and knows her inks very well. So I would highly recommend that. Now, when you're stamping, the ink is on the stamp. We want it on the paper. Sometimes if our stamping doesn't go right, it's just that literally we've not given it enough time to do its thing. And if we do, we get gorgeous results like this. See, she just stamped out perfectly. Hello. <laughs> so we are going to do the most basic colouring in the world. So I'm going to grab got my little pot of pens just for today's project. There we go. Um, and I'm going to grab a, I'm trying to do this in a way that doesn't look all very cluttered for you. Okay, I'm just going to grab a basic brown and we are going to colour all over. I'm not going to think about shades and tones or anything, I am just going to give it a base layer across the entire robot. I'm not even, hello Sophie. Okay. 
So again, what I'm trying to show here is like, I know that I'm known for enjoying my colouring and I do, I love it. And I can spend hours at it. And quite often I do. But if colouring's not your bag, if you're, it's not your thing, don't be put off thinking you have to be a colourist to use these stamps. Especially these robot ones. They are so good. You do not need to have any skill whatsoever, <laughs> to be honest, to get really fun results. So I'm just, as I said, putting a base layer of this brown across the entire thing. And again, because we're going for that rusty patina look, we are going to get the same effect on our images as well. So I've grabbed a little bit of a rust colour. So I've got a pen that's a bit more of a rust colour and I'm just going to, put in certain areas, not everywhere, I'm just going to find different areas in the um, robot just to colour her in. I might colour in the little screw heads, eyelashes here. But yeah, I'm not I'm not doing fancy blending. I'm just literally finding spots to stick a little bit of that brown down. I have also got a blue because we said like with patina that we have a little bit of blue. So I'm just again going to find different areas. I think I might put some around her eyes. So it's all looking very scruffy, but we can get away with it. Hello, Jennifer. Lovely to have you with us. And um, because she's a girl robot, I'm actually just going to like throw caution to the wind and get a bit of pink in there as well. Maybe round by her cheeks as well. Okay. Now, if you want to, we can get the original base layer again and just sort of go around the edges of what we've put down, but it's not overly necessary. But I'm going to do it anyway because it's force of habit. But I have literally scribbled this. I've not done anything fancy. I've not done any fancy blending. I've literally put scribbles of different colour down. Let me just show you how she looks. Dead easy. Now, just to give it a bit of added oomph, I am going to come in with some coloured virals. I have got... So I'm, I've got a brown and a blue and a pink and I am just going to let's put you back to the side again because it's easier for showing you okay I'm just going to in some of these shadows areas where I've got the different colors I'm actually just going to do some cross hatching with my viral so again I know we're all about building up our crafty stash and we all love it but also don't let not having something put you off doing a project just work with what you have i mean today we're working with biros and cardboard packaging so i'm just going to add a few little bits of as i said all i'm doing is a bit of cross hatching and scribbling nothing overly fancy i'm just going to scribble in here I'm kind of sort of picking out some of the nails and the elements because I think it gives a slightly more metallic look when we scribble in. And then because we do have a little bit of pink in her dress, hi Jennifer, um, I am going to just add a little bit of pink into that cross hatching as well. Because I can. And there we go. I'll just um, pop you back around. So there we go. There is like dead easy. Like there was nothing fancy about that. And to be honest, the more bleed and the lack of blending really gives her character, especially as a robot. It, I think it works really, really well. So I'm gonna pop her to the side and let's see how our um, little project is coming on. We will need to, um, grab the heat gun I think just to finish it off and I think we're probably going to need a little bit of a dry brushing with some acrylics as well hello Marion so I'm just going to dry this off A 
I've lost the ability to talk again now. I do apologise. Some areas like here where it's really puddled, we might just have to pick that up with our cloth for today. That's why I quite like it to dry naturally. I think you end up with very interesting um, puddles and things when it dries naturally. But you also get interesting effects when you use your heat gun as well. So they both have their place. Now I'm trying to decide whether to dry brush it. You can help me decide. I'm trying to decide whether to dry brush it again with those sort of patina type colours or whether to go in with a bit of gilding wax and gold and just leave the colouring as it is. What do we think? So you can type into the comments acrylic or I'm just going to heat it again from this side. It's beginning to warp because of the, the, the heat gun. Should we go with acrylics or should we go with gilding wax? Leave us this, as Jennifer says. Oh no, I think, I think it needs something, but thank you. Gilding wax. I'm gonna go gilding wax. I do feel like it needs something to bring out the texture. Right, we're gonna be here forever and a day getting those last couple of puddles up. So I'm just gonna come in with a very wet cloth for some reason it's very wet. I know why it's very wet. Basically I was prepping my live this morning and the cat likes to come in here and I had the gesso drying and did she not walk right through it? Honestly and then I had to um then I had to try and wash her paws and there was just me in the house and honestly I've got holes all the way up my back. <laughs> Right, so I am going to, let's actually do this on this angle as well because I think, well I managed to make the, the background, let's see, I'm trying to make it so that you can see it better, I don't know if that, no, we'll go back over here, changing my mind. Right, I'm just going to get a little bit of gilding wax on some of these areas because I do think it will help to bring out the texture. We may need to do some shadowing in some of the areas as well. But I think we'll wait till we've got our little characters down and see what occurs. But I love this because um, die cuts are essentially a paper craft thing. We maybe think of them more for paper crafts and putting like pretty embellishments on our cards. But they can be used to, to make like a really heavy uh, mixed media project. And again, because all of these are paper, there's not a lot of weight to the... It's funny about your kitty. Yeah, I just think I'm going to be scarred for for weeks now. <laughs> she had little white paws. And then, of course, she's trying to lick it off. And I didn't want her to be eating gesso because I didn't think that was overly handy. There we go. I love the fact that we've got a little bit of gold in there. We're definitely going to need some shadowing to make that pop a bit more. But let's get our characters on first. Right. Hello, Marion. Right, I'm just going to give that a little buff. It's like, how many times can I say right? Honestly, shocking. Give this a little buff so it goes all nice and shiny. There we go. So this right now, all it is, is a piece of packaging and cardboard. And how stunning does that look? I, I I just feel so passionately about this. The fact that we can turn what essentially would go into the trash and turn it into something gorgeous. Right, so we have some coloured characters all ready to go. So all of these have been coloured the exact same way that I've done the sort of tonal. You can see it might have turned out slightly differently, just depending on where I put the shadowing, but we've done it the same way. So I think we'll have her there. Yes, we're definitely going to need some shadowing because she's just disappearing on the page. So we will sort that out. Oh my goodness, they're so cute together. In fact, I might actually have to put some shadowing down beforehand. I think we just need the two. Oh my goodness, they are adorable. I'm in love. So cute. 
Right, I may need some spare cardboard just to stick that down. I'm just hoping, there we go, a little bit. Just because we've got quite a few, um, because there's a gap and we're going on texture, we're going to need to fill the gaps up. As you can see, I stamped on the <laughs> card that had all been already been used. Everything gets used again. Right, so that's fine. Let's get get this stuck down. Just making sure I'm still in shot, no matter where you're watching me. I'll pop some little bits on our feet as well. I feel the need to sing a little tune now for some bizarre reason. Let's hope those bits of cardboard aren't poking around by our feet. There we go. Oh my days, so cute. Right. Probably should get the gel medium out, but to be honest, I don't want to have to start rummaging around my drawers, so I will just put glue down and uh, hope it'll be all right. <laughs> right. And it's not wanting to be all right. There we go, come on, stick, stick, stay stuck. might all start coming undone once I start putting shadowing in but eh, never mind we will we will make it work regardless right now on this one because this half of his body is going to end up sticking to this one I only I only need cardboard on that side trouble is as well that is also going on something that is slightly damp which is why um it's not sticking down as well if you were doing it in real life you'd be letting things dry properly in between but it's all right we'll make it work and i can always go back in and stick these bits a bit later if required okay just gonna oh they look so cute together right they look absolutely adorable i will hold it a bit closer to see but i can see how am i getting along with digital stuff i'm hoping to have done by friday um i have been working at it all day <laughs> I'm hoping you never know right oh see it's so cute but can you see what I mean that when you look at it as an overall piece you can't really see the characters they've sort of disappeared and that is because we have no shadowing this is really going to bother me right so we need to come in with a nice dark colour I'm hoping we still might manage, Jennifer's. I'm hoping that we might. Do you know the the terrible thing about this is that I actually started um, drawing this in October. But what with Madame being so sick, a lot of things that you know I should have been really ahead on <laughs> didn't occur. So now I am currently far behind myself. We will see. We definitely have a release ready for me. But um that's ready. But because it was digital, it could kind of the other things were more important because the products had to be ordered. So there will be new stuff coming. Now can you see now that as we put this green down, how much Hello Build Me Up Buttercup. I love the name of your um love the name of your uh, Instagram. That's fab. But can you see the difference between this side where it's kind of disappeared into the project? Sorry guys on Instagram, I keep remembering that I have to... And the bottom part where we've put in that extra shadowing. It's like it needs... Anything in life has a shadow behind it. Um, so if there's something in front, there will be a shadow behind. 
and it's it'll help your projects look far more lifelike if you add shadows um, but it will also help it pop off the page see now we can see the robots we couldn't really see them before I'm hoping it'll be worth the week the problem is Jennifer is that when I used to do digital kits it was for hero images and it was um, a few sentiments whereas I think so far I've got this hopefully will come on creating craft as well at some point I will be speaking to my buyer later in the week um, so far on this one I have got 28 different digital um, stamps and they're all coloured as well and there's four sheets of ephemera <laughs> and I've still to make the papers and the toppers so we're, we're, we're trying to see how much more that pops now it really makes a difference so now we can see the little robot people so we've still got that overall patina effect we've still got all that gorgeous texture in the background but now we can see our little characters it is it's a lot of work right so i'm going to waft this with a heat gun and then we need to decide what to do next I'm thinking we maybe need a few, a bit of, a, I quite like the white space. I think it's, sometimes it's a bit scary leaving white space. We get a little bit scared of white space. So I think it's good to leave it. We might actually need a second layer of this shadow, to be honest, because as it dries, it might peel a little bit. So we might put a second layer on. I'm thinking possibly a couple of splatters so that it goes into these areas. And then a sentiment. And I think we could be close to being done, which is quite incredible because we are 41 minutes in, just over half an hour, into a live, and we've almost finished a mixed media project. How on earth has that occurred? So I just want some of those areas to have a little bit more depth because as I said, the drying, the drying process has just lightened it a little bit. So I'm just going to come back in again with the same color and just try and deepen some of the various areas. The other thing, advantage of adding shadowing there is we've also grounded these little guys now so they're not just floating. I do have an issue with floating images. That's my it's my personal thing preference. Not everyone needs to ground their images, but I like them grounded. Right. So let's get back in here. I'm just building up the dark. I also am thinking that possibly we should have a little bit of the dark up here to frame it. just to tie it together and possibly frame the whole piece a little bit. It's um, resisting the gold, which is fine. It's given us an interesting effect. Well, that's because we put our gold on first. Oh, look, they're so cute. Hello, Shanna. Right, just going to give that another little waft. Right, I'm thinking that I want to add a little bit just along here. And just to frame the overall project and draw the eye in a little bit and we'll maybe do the same at this corner here now i've done that i'm not so sure but hey ho it is what it is i'm not overly 
keen. So it is watercolour. I'm just going to lift it back off. It's gone in the crevices a little bit, but it's not too bad. The advantage of watercolour, you can almost erase it. I mean, if I was really bothered, we could go back in with white gesso, but I'm not overly bothered. But yeah, I decided I didn't like that dark, sorry. <laughs> It does show that you can change your mind as you go. There we go. It has brought out the texture though, so it's all good. Right, so we do need to frame it. So maybe we should go back in with the gilding wax and just grab all the edges with the gilding wax and then we'll get a sentiment in. And then I think we're done for today. So we have used the Mechanical Mayhem dye collection and the mechanical mayhem stamps to create this so all of that texture has been done with our die cuts which i think is just fab I'm getting my hands absolutely covered Sorry, I'm losing the ability. I'm trying to read your comments, craft, and make sure that I'm in frame all at the same time. I clearly can't multitask very well. There we go. Look at that. It's so pretty. Right. Let's give this a bit of a bath. I definitely need to change my, um, my work top mat there. It's, uh, it's just a bit of a... Uh, paper it's a bit of lining paper that I use on my desk because I like a nice white desk for when I am doing lives and filming thank you Judy a little bit different anyway a lot quite a lot of there we go as I said thank you Samantha so it's literally all we've got is packaging die cuts and a little image I do want to put a little sentiment so let's see what we have hmm. i'm not going to use this one but i love this sentiment does my bolt look big in this <laughs> made especially for you let's see we have you make me smile hope you have the best day ever not so about you Do you know what? i think i'm going to go for these ones so we've got innovation and create thank you is it Shon Shonzi? That's how it's turning up on Instagram. But thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. Right, I'm just going to pull this bit of card back in because it's too hand. Oh, we still have a lot. I still have all of these extra bits, but I don't think we need them, to be honest. I think we're fine with just the characters, so we can use them another day. Let's just get ourselves a little stamp block. Oh. only need a little one for the sentiments I'm going to try and be, be brave and try and stamp them both at the same time it's probably going to turn out a disaster it's not something you should probably attempt live but hey ho <laughs> thank you Jennifer right I'm just realizing how very messy my desk looks no that's not the one I, I was just making sure we were on the close-up one right okay it's all good Let's just stamp these down and then I will try and get everything in frame. There we go. Try and get it so we can actually see what's occurring. Right, let's chop these down. I'm not bothered about it being straight because you know we've got there we go create innovation we will make that stand out in just a minute now i just need to decide if i want yeah right so i'm just going to grab the marker that i was using on those little stamps and i'm just to tie it in otherwise it's just very white 
oops and I've just scribbled it and I've not scribbled it perfectly and then I am going to grab my black marker pen hello Lynette how are we I am going to grab my black marker pen and just roll around the edges because it will help it hello thank you for popping in I've been using your products Lynette we have been using where did it go we've been and there it is we've been using marble paste this is one of my favorite ever products that Lynette does and yeah anytime anytime there's cogs involved marble paste is involved thank you very much right so we're going to just pop the little black edges round because it will help it pop off the page a little bit like we did when the robots went down we couldn't see them but once we put that dark paint behind all of a sudden it popped out and we could see them so the same principle applies with our sentiments it did look a little bit lost but once we use the black outline we are going to um see it much better so there we go create innovation oops And that is us all done. There we go. So once again, a huge thank you to Crate and Craft for allowing me to stream on their Facebook page. It has been lovely to have been part of Crate and Craft for today. Um, I will be back live with Crate and Craft again next Tuesday, but at 1 p.m. And for everybody else, hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully I will maybe see you Friday-ish, um, if not definitely next Monday. Now hang on, let me just swing you back round to, I've got to sort the lighting out, it's always an issue. There we go. It's just vanity. It's vanity because I don't like all these ring lights on my face. I just don't think it does me any good. There we go, like, that's so, it looks so different in this light. There we go. Thank you so much for joining me. I have loved crafting with you this evening and I will be back again very, very soon. So take care and goodbye. She says, I just need to get my mouse to work. Once I get my mouse to work, I'll say goodbye properly.